Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Amika Gem. Okay guys, before we start talking about Chanel 21A, I want to kind of say something which is a little bit heavy for this channel because this channel rarely gets political, but obviously there's something going on in the world um, in a place that's very special to Christians, Jews, and Muslims. Um, and this conflict you know, has been going on for some time. So I just wanna say I'm praying for both sides involved. And I hope that a peaceful solution can come soon. I wasn't sure if I was going to say anything, um, but I think it would be disingenuous not for me to say anything. Um, most of you, if you watch this channel, you know I'm a Christian. I'm a very devout one at that. Um, but I don't really talk about my religion on this channel. And that's not the point. Um, the point of this channel is talking about shopping, okay? <laughs> but I just think it's really important to say something and to hope for the best for both sides. And I just want you guys to know that I follow current affairs and I'm praying for both sides involved in this. Okay, let's get into Chanel and their shenanigans, okay? We're gonna go through all of the bags. I'll post all the relevant um, credits in the description below. Let's start with this first slide here. Um, yeah, it's just more of the same, you know, more black and gold um, from Chanel. These aren't really interesting to me. I don't really get the color of that cocoa handle. Um, I'm just sitting here kind of confused, like, why version you? Anyway, next slide. Um, this is not really great. I don't like the reissue anyway, so the silver bag wouldn't be anything for me. Uh, more of the same, the white and green boy. It's not like anything massive. I mean, I did do a preview video for Chanel 21A. Um, and now that more bags have dropped, um, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's more of the same basically from them. This is the Mitzi Adar collection. So this tends to be the collection where the bags tend to be a bit darker in mood. They're always like that. There's this So Black um, reissue that looks interesting. Um, this particular individual has hearted the <laughs> mini with the top handle. I do not like that bag. Okay? I just don't understand. It looks like a tweedish kind of... Um, a 19 there which looks industry interesting i beg your pardon there's also this black coco handle there's this bag this one has been doing the rounds on instagram that like opens up with the double cc um this looks absolutely minuscule i'm sure it's going to cost thousands of dollars pounds euros etc there's this pink one here this looks tiny as well chanel you're not taking my money for things that are tiny you can take my money for the trendy okay but not for this i haven't seen any trendsters either so far there's also this, um, I think this is for AirPods, this like black, no, no, sorry, it's like a gold. Um, oh, actually, this is actually a bag. That's a bag that looks like a shirt. And then there's like a gold um, pouch, I think for AirPods. That's ridiculous and stupid. And then there's this like denim sausage thing. What is that? It looks like a sausage. Guys, this white bag looks nice. I love white bags and leather, but I just can't commit to like buying one from a luxury brand. It's just way too much money to spend, but I just, I can't do it, you guys, I can't do it. But there's this denim sausage. So what do you guys think of the denim sausage? Let me know. Um, this one I think will sell. This like beautiful kind of dark um, red with gold hardware. I think this one is gonna do very well. This is actually the one I, I like most. Um, then there's this weird kind of harlequiny looking bag that I don't like. Um, I love monochrome fundamentally. I like have always loved monochrome, but I don't like the way Chanel does monochrome. And this bag is not the business. I'm sure it's going to cost thousands and thousands of pounds as well. Okay, so more bags for us to go through. Please make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to hit that bell. Um, this this bag is actually on my thumbnail for this video. It's this like, I think it's like a caramel colored um, boy bag. I have a feeling that this bag was a late addition after they saw how well the, um, the I think it was like what, the, ca the caramel 19 bag and that caramel flap, they saw that those did so fab for them. And I think that they added them as well. Um, I think that one looks interesting. Like I said, there's this, I, I, Again, another kind of critique on the way Chanel um, use monochrome. I personally do not like this monochrome bag. It's on the top side of the picture. I do not like that. I, like I said, that tweed bag looks interesting and cute. Um, nothing here to really write home about. Um, and then on this uh, next slide here, we'll see this Caramel 19. Am I tripping or did they do a Caramel 19 in the previous collection? I'm pretty sure they did. I think it's back again here, that ridiculous denim sausage. On the right hand side, there's this flap that looks kind of tweedish um, and there's some green bags as well. Again, more ugly monochrome bags that looks like a sort of like a bucket bag with like a drawstring. Um, ridiculous and ugly. 
I don't know why Virginie bothers with this sometimes. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Um, these bags look a little bit better. If you look at the top there, you should see that rose mini. Um, again, it's not like it's not like anything to massively write home about at the end of the day, but I do think that that one will probably do very well. Many people love the reissue. I personally do not like the reissue. I think there's also a reissue here. Yeah, that's in like a kind of dark blood, like dark blood red reissue. I think that will probably do very well. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. <laughs> and the attack of the monochrome bags. Go away and buzz off. Okay, there's another one which kind of looks like just like a standard monochrome bag. There's that ugly flap one that we've also seen. Virginie, why? Why, babe? Why are you doing this to us? Because these bad bees are not bad bees, okay? They're ugly. So, yeah, not feeling this as well. Let's move on. Now we're going on to SLGs. The SLGs, um, I think if you look at the thumbnail, I've also put them. There's that red one here. It's like on the first row. It's the, it's the third one on the first row if you're reading from the right-hand side. Um, I think that is going to do very, very well for them. Everything else looks stupid and ugly. The pouches, I like Chanel pouches, but I like pouches in general. Let's just go on to the next slide because a lot of their stuff is not interesting. Um... I've noticed something with S Chanel's SLGs. They've been getting smaller and smaller with every collection and they're costing just as much money as the last time. And then, yeah, now I think, hold on, wait, I think there's some more bags here. There's also a green cocoa handle on this slide. I think you, you should be able to see it. There's also a sort of, it looks like a light blue or like a white mini um, with a top handle. I hate those bags. I just, I just don't like them. I prefer the trendy. I don't know why she, why are you trying to replace the trendy, girl? Why are you trying to replace the trendy, okay? No one's checking for you, replacing the trendy. Um, yeah, so there's just more of the same here on the next slide. Nothing massive to report so far. This is a clearer picture of the entire collection. I personally don't really care um, for um, this collection that much. I thought, I thought it was going to be much better than it is. I don't think there's anything on here that I'm trying to purchase, basically. It's just the standard stuff with me. I'll just get the trendy. Everything here just looks kind of normal stuff. Um, the costume, I did see the costume jewelry somewhere, but I can't find it right now. So hopefully by the time that we move, we move on to the edit, I should be able to have found it. Okay, guys, let's go through the costume jewelry, which is, I think, like the best part of this collection. Let's start with this AirPods. <laughs> case okay, so necklace i still use normal um like headphones with wires i don't need this my husband always laughs at me like come on again I'm like you just get airpods i'm like i'm not putting airpods in here i'm gonna look like an android from a sci-fi film so no shade if that's you but i still use normal headphones this thing looks expensive let me just put it that way the next slide here is this necklace. I think it's very cute with the red. It kind of gives me like Anne Boleyn vibes, you know, like the traditional portrait of Anne Boleyn that says B on there, like with the double CCs. It's kind of cute, I like it. Um, okay, next slide. These earrings I think here are the best of the entire collection. Frankly, I think these earrings are owning all of the bags, to be honest. I love the ones that say Chanel, <laughs> like that. I like that, I don't know why I like that, but I vibe it. Um, and then, yeah, everything on here I love. I would buy any of these. I think they're very cute. Yes, yes, we know. Costume jewelry, you know, we, we know. But I think if you choose the right piece, it could work out. On this slide here, it's just more of the same, you know, the double CCs. There's this Chanel ring, which is interesting, although I, obviously because it's costume jewelry, it's going to, you know, turn into brass very soon. But yeah, and then there are these, I think these are bracelets. Um, and then there's this necklace as well, which I think is very cute. They're saying it's an AirPods necklace. I think this is cute. Um, I think you could probably get away with not even using this as an for AirPods, but the AirPods are meant to hang um, on those like little bits at the end as well. And then these are some brooches. There's some cuffs here. I've heard bad things about Chanel cuffs. I've heard that the pearls fall out. So that's not really exciting, but I just thought I'd show you. So yeah, that is the Chanel 21A collection. What do you guys think of the bags, the SLGs and the costume jewelry? Are you going to be buying anything? <laughs> I'd love um, to hear from you to know what you guys think of this. Um, I think the collection is just more of the same. There have been some rumors that there is a price increase. Um, we don't know until we know. So I don't want to talk about um, a price increase because to me it's kind of like conjecture until there's more information coming from multiple sources as opposed to people just going off what an essay tells them. Don't forget the essay is not God. They're not the all-seeing eye that gets to kind of know everything. 
Um, and um, I think it's important for us to wait for more information to come out. So I don't want to talk about that too much. I do think that there'll be a price increase by, before Chanel 21K. Um, so let's see what happens with that. Before I go, I want to get on my soapbox about something. I'm sure most of you know that Pandora, which is a very big American jewelry company, has said that they're going to stop using mined diamonds in a lot of their products. So I haven't seen, really seen a lot of people um, from Africa who have given reactions. So I just wanted to quickly give my point of view and my reaction to this. I think it's important for you guys to know. I know many of you um, are international and I speak to a lot of you. You're in different parts of the world. I'm so grateful to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe. But I think Pandora is making a mistake and I want to explain why. Um, by the way, there's nothing wrong with you if you like lab-grown diamonds, if you use lab-grown diamonds and you're passionate about them. There's nothing wrong with lab-grown diamonds. My only issue with people is the people who choose synthetic diamonds or synthetic gems because they say that they're being ethical. Okay, so I just want to be clear. If you personally just want to go, go for a cheaper diamond, um, and you want to get something more affordable or, or a cheaper gem and you want to get a lab grown option I think that's fine. I don't mind that at all because I think that's a consumer choice and I'm all for people going for the consumer choice My issue is the people who choose synthetic diamonds because they think that they're more ethical It is not more ethical or sustainable to choose a synthetic diamond over a mine diamond because at the end of the day by choosing a synthetic diamond or a synthetic gem you're actually taking money and income from indigenous people who surround these mines i think sometimes like for those of us who love luxury or you love diamonds you love jewelry i think you may forget what that little bracelet or what this ring or these two rings you know um are actually doing for communities where um the gem is mined and harvested so for example my husband is actually from the area where tanzanite grows naturally and that is um it's kind of like like north central tanzania basically and the area is called kilimanjaro where the very famous kilimanjaro mountain is and there is an entire ecosystem um of people who literally are from villages they are employed by the mine mines the various mines that are there they wake up every day they kiss you know their wife goodbye and they go to work to provide for their family because of this mind resource not because no disrespect but not because of some random like lab somewhere else that's not even in africa that's actually taking ip from a mind resource okay so lab grown diamonds exist because of mine diamonds, not the other way around. And I just feel like if you're someone who wants to be ethical, but not just to the environment um, or to animals, but to human beings, which is also really important. I think humans get lost in the sustainability conversation so much. You're actually hurting other human beings by taking an income stream away from them. So a few days ago when Pandora um, announced the, uh, the news, which I think was like a week ago or something like that, um, a few like of these like diamond jewelry pages um, were reacting. So I wanted to see like what people were saying. I wanted to see if there were people in the West who understood what I was saying and my point of view. And very few people were mentioning this. Most people are saying, okay, well, I guess we're just gonna buy synthetic diamonds now. What's gonna happen to the diamond industry? Of course, the synthetic industry is growing um, a lot compared to the mining, the mined industry for all gemstones. But I think that something that people are forgetting is like, you can't say that you believe in like helping people in developing countries, but then you take away an income source that literally helps people help themselves. And let me tell you, people here, particularly in TZ, I can, I, I know that, and South Africa, people don't want a handout. People don't want like charity from like a lab grown company. So someone on that page, on this um, jeweler's page was saying, well, lab grown companies can help like indigenous communities where these mines are found and all the rest of it. And I was like, well, who wants a handout? No one's talking about any handouts here. People in those communities don't want handouts. And no, I'm not a shell for the mining industry. I don't have a, di a, 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 a diamond mine somewhere in Tanzania. I don't have a Tanzania mine, okay? I wish I did, okay? Because I'll be swimming in a whole lot of Monets, but I do not. And I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm not like a shill for the government or whatever or whatever, you know? This is just my honest to God's opinion. Um, I personally, the way I view synthetic um, diamonds is like, I just don't like synthetic diamonds. So I am biased, I guess, because I am African. I don't like synthetic diamonds. There are other people who don't care, but I'm just saying like, you're just, you're just, you're not really helping indigenous communities. So I want to give a really good example. So 
Um, a few weeks ago, speaking to a really good friend of mine who was, um, yeah, you know, she was like looking at my Instagram page and she was like, oh, babe, but you know, do you go on safari a lot with your husband? You don't really post like natural animals or like safari animals. I was like, actually, I went on safari with my husband last year and it was lit. Um, and she was like, okay. So she was saying how she would love to come on safari in Tanzania or Kenya, but she feels like it's not ethical to go on safari. Now, again, this is what I said. It's so important to do your own research. Now, yes, I'm biased. Yeah, again, you're from TZ. So obviously you want to like promote your country's safari industry. Again, like I said, no one's cutting me a check for these opinions, okay? I wish the beers would come with a check, baby, okay? I would take it in a heartbeat. I'm not even kidding. So I was telling her, I was like, look, for me, at least in my opinion, and I found this with my husband when we went on our safari um, to the various parks in Tanzania, is like the safari industry is actually an ecosystem that supports so many different people from different walks of life. By going on a safari, whether you're going to South Africa, Namibia, Kenya, Tanzania, you're, su you're supporting environmentalists, period. You're supporting them. You're supporting conservationists. You're supporting people who literally, they are way more passionate about these animals than PETA. I said it, okay? And I don't miss, it's like, I don't care if any of you support PETA or whatever, you have not met anything when it comes to animal passion than these people. And they would do anything to protect these magnificent creatures, whether they're, you know, lions or cheetahs or whatever so i just wanted to kind of I'm, I'm willing to give an opinion and not stand on a fence on this stuff and i was telling her i was like you're actually supporting way more people who care about these animals than you realize by coming on safari i'm not just talking about the people who work in hospitality who obviously benefit from tourism money i'm talking about the park rangers so for example when we went on our safari um we were in this park called um, manyara which is a famous national park in tanzania and um, like, I remember it was like, it was, I don't know, it was kind of like late afternoon. So we were driving back to town and um, we asked like the tour guide, I was like, well, what happens at night with the animals? And he was like, oh my gosh, like the park is, is literally monitored 24 seven, end of like 24 hours a day, the park is monitored by park rangers to deter poachers. So the government has like, actually in my country, I can't speak for other countries, the government has worked so hard to um protect these animals so it was just i don't know it was just so interesting so i was like telling my friend that and she's like whoa i didn't know this stuff like i didn't know i was like yeah you wouldn't know because it's not going to be like it's not going to be public knowledge that you're going to read about on like a mainstream website and trust me i read everything i watch bbc al jazeera cnn i love those channels i have nothing against them but it's not going to be stuff that you can just easily read about on those websites for example you need to come to people like me who actually I'm from Tanzania and I live here currently. So I can give you a more like unvarnished view. Of course, it's still my opinion. You still need to do your research, but you'll be hard pressed to find a Tanzanian person that does not support um, the safari industry here. And again, like I said, I don't, I don't have any business interests in mine diamonds, in mining or in the tourism industry. I have no businesses in that. I've already told you I'm, a, I'm in digital marketing. I just think it's so important um, to make sure that you make your decisions based off th like the whole picture. You know, sometimes these words like sustainability get thrown around a lot and no disrespect, but I think sometimes people don't really understand what, what the whole sustainability chain means. Sustainability is not just for the environment. People need to benefit from sustainability as well. And I cannot, I mean, I know this because in one of my businesses a few years ago, I had a client who was from the region where there's gold in Tanzania. And she was very, very successful because of the, the, the mining, the gold mining industry. And through that, she was able to support her entire family, her extended family. She was able to send her children to South Africa to go to school because of that. So by saying that you support synthetic gems because you're trying to be more ethical and to help um, people because you don't want children working in a diamond mine, you're actually not helping. What you're actually going to do is synthetic um, mining or synthetic lab grown diamonds is just going to drive mined um, diamonds underground and actually all that stuff from you know the blood diamond movie with you know Jimon Honsu and Leo DiCaprio fantastic movie they were so great in that film all that stuff will actually come back I think the ethical mines are way better and the ethical gem industry is way better all of the major brands that we love are all part of the Kimberley process you know so the Kimberley process is, is a very famous process which they even talk about in the movie 
movie with DiCaprio and um, Jimon Onsu, where basically the, like each diamond um, minor has to use humanitarian ways and cannot hire children. You know, so for example, you cannot hire a child, like a supplier cannot hire a child, you know, to work somewhere. And fun little story, just to like riff, riff off that. Um, a few years ago, I remember there was like a store near where I lived um, in Da. I was renting a house and I would always go to that store to buy drinks. It was just like a little corner shop. And at the corner shop, there was a little boy. And in Swahili, he didn't speak any English. I remember just one day, I was like, I always buy my, my drinks from here, but I'm curious, how old are you? And he was like, you kind of got all tense and got, you know, and I was like, don't, don't, don't panic. I'm not from the government, I'm just curious how old you are. He was 10 years old, you know? And I was like, whoa. So a few days later, um, I saw there was like the man who owns the shop, he was there. And I was like, hey, like, you know, I'm not trying to be an annoying person or a busybody, but I saw this kid and he's always here serving clients and he's 10. And he was like, oh, you know, but we need him. I was like, no, he needs to be in school. And what you're doing is illegal. So, you know, you need to handle that, you know? And I was like, I don't want to be a super grass, but you know what you need to do. I didn't see the boy there. And the, and then a few weeks later, I was told by my security guard at my, at my crib that, oh, you know, when you went there and you said something, um, actually he realized like what he was doing was wrong and the child needs to be in school. It's not about, oh, I can't afford to send my kid to school. We have free schools here where you can go to a free school. You can go to a free religious school, for example, for free and parishioners can pay for it. It's not an issue. And I was like, okay, I'm happy about that. I'm not sharing that to kind of pontificate and kind of, kind of come across like preachy and all again, you think you're so whatever. But what I'm saying is like, it's really important to take a stand for the things you believe in. So for me, I, I really do stand up for the things that I believe in. And I believe in people being held accountable. I didn't want him to get in trouble. And I didn't, honestly, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I didn't even go to the government. I didn't, whatever, I actually forgot about it. So I'm glad that me just having an, 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 a simple conversation with him, you know, I was like, you know, it's not really fair to have a child there. He should be in school learning how to read. He should be with his um, um, classmates. And I do remember he couldn't read. And I remember that because one day I was just like, oh yeah, can you pass me this? And I forgot to, I didn't say the name. So I wanted to see if he could read and he couldn't. So I'm glad that that got sorted out. So I'm just kind of sharing that with you guys to say that like Africa isn't what you think. There are things like that, but there are many people who are also super educated and who want to provide for themselves and who actually see themselves as stewards of these beautiful diamonds, you know, Tanzanite, Zambian emeralds and all of these animals. So don't think that you're actually helping by making an ethical decision not to support an indigenous business that's in this country or in this continent because that's not ethical you're just taking money away from people who could actually really use it so i hope no one's mad at me okay after this but i think it's just really important for me to kind of say because i think there's a lot of misinformation concerning the whole synthetic um mining industry and the synthetic gem industry don't get me wrong buy as many synthetic diamonds as you want if that's what you want to do i believe in consumer choice that's fine i'm just saying don't if you use ethical diamonds don't choose lab-grown diamonds because you think that you're you're protecting a child in africa from like working in a diamond mine it's not really like that it's a very complex situation and supporting an ethically mined gemstone business is way better than I'm um, supporting a lab grown business that wouldn't actually benefit anyone here because lab the lab grown technology is not in Africa. Anyway, you guys, I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell. I'd love to know what you think of the Chanel 21A collection. Of course, if you have different opinions to me, that's fine. You know, let's keep it as civil as possible. I can't wait to hear from you and I'll see you in my next video.